Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> What it do, Styles? I don't know a lot of y'all about that. Man, shit fucked up right now. Thank you for tuning in to the Joe Podcast. Guys. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. We back, we back, we back, baby. Okay, three months behind on rent, but my PO, I paid him. Just thought I warned you when I'm broke, I turn into a gangster. I did not know you did this. I told him pop and say he can't afford it. Lord, forgive me if he tell me, I might have to force him. Two pair of drawers. That's just one of them. back to jail, I'm coming. Yo me llamo Luco Brass. Yo mato por nada. Yo tengo muchas pistolas. Yo tengo cocaína, marihuana y lo que tú necesitas. Numeros buenos. If you have a trouble translating what the fuck I just said, go get Rosetta Stone. Oh man. Yo, yo. No need for the introduction. We sent here with a legend. We're a young staple. legend. A staple in the Arkansas culture. The hip hop culture. You know, and we see him all the time and he always humble. <laughs> but I told him when we when he sat down in here, hey, I hope you didn't come on no humble stuff. <laughs> It's time to flex your muscle. Talk your shit. What's up, King? What's, What's popping? Up? Y'all give it up for DJ Young Styles. What's good? What's good? Yeah. Styles, what's popping? Oh, uh, man, I'm living life, dog. Taking the day to day. Day to day. Yes, sir. Nice. So what's what's been going on with you lately? Oh, uh, man, pretty much, you know, trying to tie everything in, you know. It's a struggle, dog. You know, being multifaceted, trying to make everything work at one time. But, you know, taking my time, grooming everything, getting everything right, putting pieces in putting pieces in place, you know, and we're working. Nice. nice. Man, you fit the description of the, the podcast the most, man. Cool, like, man. you're a real jack of all trades, man. I appreciate it. What's, so let me ask you this. What's, do you still get the same feeling, the same emotion? When you hear that, when you, when you hear those songs that we just played, yeah, man, you know, it's you know, just one thing about it. I when when it went when it went down when everything happened, I actually was was able to live in the moment. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. I got to enjoy it. You know, so I still can re, you know reflect back to those times and still get a good feeling about it. You know, it feels like it was just yesterday. Wow. Yeah. And that's some, that's that's pretty amazing because I know for me, you know, um, back rewi- rewinding back to twenty man, twenty eleven, twenty through twenty thirteen when I had my run as a DJ throwing yep. parties and everything, you extended your arm out to me for sure, you know. And we threw um, what was that the the twerk fest? <laughs> yeah, we threw the twerk fest the down twerk there, fest, yeah. you know, and it was <laughs> like a um. You know, it was like a you were already up here established and had a lot going for yourself. You was DJing, you yeah. you had the club and everything. You were still doing beats and everything on sure. the side. And um, one thing that you did was you looked out for me tough, real tough for sure. But you and, and you don't know this, but it was in a back in back then, 2015 era, when we did the twerk fest. That was around the time I bought my first home. Oh, for real? Yep, bought my first home. I was new as a dad, new as a, new as a parent, a father figure, mm-hmm. and I was going through it. Yeah, going through it, and not just going through it financially, but mentally. You know. Oh yeah. I just came off of the, off of the deployment and everything, and um, I came going on the deployment. I was a single. I I wasn't a single dad, but I was living by myself, and so when I came back, I came home to. My daughter and my girlfriend at the time, which is my wife now. Yeah. And um, it was just puzzling, like piece, putting the pieces together and trying to adapt and everything. Yeah. But one thing that you did was you, we uh, we we came together for that for that event, that twerk fest. And I never had to question anything about, you know, I don't know if this going to go right or how this going to go. You know, we collaborated on it mm-hmm. and everything the same uh, we came there, we done the event, 
And we went back, counted out the money, and you cashed me out. For sure. And I always tell you to this day, like, man, I owe you one. <laughs> I always say that I owe you one anyway. <clears throat> but, yeah, man. But that's you, and you by far, uh, you by far a few years older than me, so I that's what I say. That's what the the OGs, the people that's established in the game, they reach out to the younger younger people, connect with them, and show them like, hey, it's it's perfectly fine for us to exist, yeah, and work together, yeah. So and I still see you. That's man, six years. That was six years ago. It's twenty twenty one now, and you still doing the same thing for sure. Still reaching out to the youth, still connecting and networking with people. Where did you get that from? Where did that foundation come from? Oh uh, man, I think it came from experience. You know, when we came up doing our thing, you know, I think the the biggest problem that we had, we didn't have any guidance. Yeah, you know, there was never nobody, you know, that was older than us. Like when I say guidance, I mean guiding us doing what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, it was you know we had older heads. Shout out to my big homie Yukon and K Love, Fat Mac, you know, D Y, all them boys. You know, they guided us through life and taught us different things. But as far as, you know, in the music side of everything, like we didn't have anybody to guide us through it. So, mm. you know, we made a lot of mistakes. You know, we bumped our heads a lot. We could have went further than what we went if we just had just one person that could have guided us through it. So, out. so I feel like that's my purpose now. You know, I learned so much, you know, I've done so much. So now it's my turn to take everything that I gathered over these years and instill it, you know. So these people, I, I'm, I'm basically trying to soften the, the blows, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they don't have to bump their heads and, you know, they don't get misguided from somebody from the outside, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Yeah. That's major. And coming from Dermont, Arkansas. DA, baby. Dermont, <laughs> Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have credits with Soldier Boy. Yep. Starlito. Yep, yep. Kevin Gates. For sure. What's the, the Arkansas guy that just passed away not long ago? Uh, what you talking about? Freak? Freak. Yeah, me and Freak work. Rod D. Rod D. Bow Wow, Bow Wow, Rocco, Killer Calion, DSR, you know what I'm saying? Talk I can, your shit. I can keep going. Keep you know going. What I'm saying? Keep going. <laughs> uh, you know. Yo. Rewind it back. Say it, <laughs> yeah. say, it, say it again. Say it again for them that it, for those that didn't hear. Yeah, man. You know, I I was blessed to work with a lot of artists, man. You know, Starlito, Kevin Gates, uh, DSR, Killer Calion, Boss Hog Outlaw. You know what I'm saying? Rocco, Soldier Boy, Bow Wow. Little twist from Young Money, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, quite quite a few big name artists. So coming from Southeast Arkansas, small town USA, mm -hmm. how was you able to connect with these artists during the time? This was like the beginning of the social media. Era. Exactly, and that's what came into play. You know, um, like I, I tell my kids all the time, like you know, around my age group, we got the best of you know, we got to experience everything. We got to experience life before social media. And we walked into life with social media. Mm -hmm. So me, you know, being into computers, into tech, you know, I was early on the the social media internet wave. So I pretty much had websites before anybody knew about websites. I was selling beats online before people, you know. Before you know, Soldier yeah. Boy. I was like, before you, before <laughs> yeah. you get too deep in, before yeah. you get too deep in it, I wanna I wanna start back, I, I guess like your junior high high school years. Like yeah. what um I guess what gave you the passion um, or just that drive or just you want to do something um, so like with music? What, what made you first like interested in that? Man, I don't know where it came from. I just always loved music. You know what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. we started started as a young age rapping and freestyling. It's just, you know, something. You used you to know. freestyle? Yeah, man. I used to be cold, bro. Let me hear it. Man, I can't do it no more. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got it no more, man. But hey, people, yeah. people like that bounce for me, man. Like, it's cold, bro. It's cold, man. Like you know, we used to. Was was music a big part of your family? Like as far not no. just ne necessarily instruments and um, making music, but just what if it's just, it might just be every Saturday cleaning up and and they playing the music and it kind of like you know what I mean. I, what was your, what was your upbringing as far as music, or it was just you? You was the first. Yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't never nothing like that. You know, basically, you know, a lot of you know black people coming up. You know, pretty much we our first introduction to music was the church. Mm 
Yeah. Know what I'm saying? So I grew up in the church. My mom was the choir director. Mm. I had to be in the choir. You know what I'm right. saying? And too. so we started from there, you know. So I said that was my first introduction, but you know what I'm saying? I I remember I remember hearing Humpty Dumpty and you know what I'm saying and Pac and you know all these artists and and it drew me in you know my first song I think first song I think I actually learned word for word was Tupac shed so many tears you know what I'm saying mm. wow. you know what I'm saying it, it was just something that you know I always I always gravitated to and took a liking to I I love music too but I wouldn't know where to start when it comes to like making an actual beat or. Mm-hmm. producing you know what i mean yeah where where did you get there from like from from day one as far as when you started like actually making music like studio equipment or a mm-hmm. beatbox or even knowing the right equipment you know what i mean where that come from man just pretty much just learning over the years you know what i'm saying like like i was saying the early years when we first started and first learned you know we was we was on cassettes, you know. We had a tape recorder. We, you know, you had to put the tape or the paper inside the little hole on the on the cassette tape, and mm. to be able to record over it. And had the little mic hole. We were rapping to the mic hole. We was in the projects beside the beside the railroad. So you know, train to come in the middle of the freestyle. We had to start all <laughs> over. Start all <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, man. When, so, when you say we, who you referring to? Man, me and my homeboy. Shout out to my homeboy Los. You know what I'm saying? It was pretty much me and him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's dope, man. Yep. 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 Los. Yeah. That boy Los. Not not KC Los. Nah, man. that's the that's my so little it's homie. Los before yeah, KC my homeboy Los. Los. Wow. What's so crazy is my 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 homeboy Los. You know, we came up doing this rap thing. It was actually a whole clique of us. We was three ride. Three ride. But you know, Los was like that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My whole mindset the whole time we were together was like. This nigga Lowe's gonna be the one to take off. Like I need to do whatever I can do to to get behind him. You know what I'm saying? He actually went out to Jacksonville, Florida, and was uh, nominated for a Duval Diamond Award. Oh, word! Yeah, mm. yeah, that's dope. And Real this top. was in the 2000s. This was uh, I think that was like 2012 ish. 2000, wow. yeah. Yeah, that boy was on, you know, he got into some, you know, certain issues we mm-hmm. can't speak on. But, yeah. man, he was right there. Like, like people were coming into town, coming to see him perform. Bigger Rankin was at the studio every day. Like, oh, wow. man, you killing the streets. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was that type of situation. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Real talk. So, being, so just being around that and in that culture, mm-hmm. in that environment with, you know, literally a life-changing moment at the tip of your fingers. How do you, how do you, how do you still, because, I mean, because that's, that's like a, I was this close, you yeah. know, I was this close to, to, to one of my partners taking off, yeah. you know, and that would have opened up so many doors to mm-hmm. the production side, the beat side, people would have got to know DJ Styles mm-hmm. a lot more, but that didn't hinder you because you nah. still have been, you know, able to keep on pushing keep on doing your thing. And you, you have, right now you have the clothing brand going mm-hmm. You know, you do you still do beats? Nah, I kind of slacked off of the beats. I still, you know, I dib and dab. You know, I work with certain artists. You know, artists that I got rapport with. You know, we still. Yeah. I make sure I tap in with them, but other than that, I ain't going out my way to just. You know what I'm saying? It's time to elevate to something else. Yeah. Yeah. Who created your tag for you? Los. Shouts mm. out to DJ yeah, Style. That's my boy Los. And that, that's On the only. Beat. That's the yeah. only tag you didn't ever had. I had another one with my look with my look cousin earlier in the days. It was just Young Styles, boy. But yeah. you know, I got yeah. that shout out to DJ Styles because all my beats fed and ran with it. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Yeah. Did you did he hear that somewhere? Like, cause you know, a lot of times there's nothing wrong with like hearing what works and then making it your own. Uh-huh. Did, did did he hear that from somewhere? Or it was just like. An epiphany or something like he just like all right let's do this let's like do this, this and yeah. did it like was nah it like- he did a song he was rapping he said dang I can't think of the words what did he say uh mm-mm, mm-mm, my niggas keep bread shout out to DJ Styles because all my beats fed like, he uh, was so in he was in the middle of a song just like, yeah. shout out to my and I took it out the song slowed it down and put it in my tag that's hard so, yeah wow. that's yeah. hard real talk so I say how would how did you feel like I'm I'm sure like you sending. Uh, making beats and just you just like compiling beats and beats and and mm-hmm. you start just sending them out like how did you feel when some like big names that we came up listening to and stuff like this started like 
actually like using them and stuff like that. Like, how did you even get to the point where you started like sending them out like directly to these people? Honestly, man, it came through just relationships. You know what I'm saying? Just came through relationships. Like, I started messing with um, with the whole DSR thing and Boss Hog Outlaws. I got plugged in with Lil Ronnie. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's my dog. You know, we did a whole tape together. Okay. Then we actually did a song with Tum Tum and had the whole DSR on it. Yeah, then wow. had a song with Killer Calion, and then I actually uh, from the Killer Calion feature, I did a, a a track for this guy named PJ. He was with the Boss Hog Outlaws. Outlaws, so that's how I got plugged in with them. You know what I'm saying? So it was just relationships. Same thing with Gates. They, that connection came from my homeboy Lil Cali, yeah. Cali Pacino. So you know that situation was just like y'all just chopping it up with somebody. Just like send me a pack and. Uh, well, actually, me and Cali did a uh, song with Gates on it called Nasty. Okay. And, you know, he liked the beat so much, he told Cali to plug him in. You know, I'm sitting at the house one day. I was living in Bryant. It was like 7 in the morning. A nigga called me like, man, what's up? It's like, man, what's up, man? What's this? I'm like, nigga, this Gates. I'm like, shit, nigga, what's up? <laughs> yo, yo. Hey, what's, what's up? Shit, yo, yeah, yeah, real talk, bro. So and, you, you had, know, a per- like, a, I guess a business, but, like, a personal relationship with him. Yeah. Like, you able to pick up the phone, or yeah. was at one point able to pick up the phone and just chop it up with him? Yeah, or, you, yeah. yeah, you know, actually, man, after he dropped Isla, the next project that he was releasing, my beat, we had a song called Keep It G With Me. Mm-hmm. That was actually going to be the next single for his next project. Wow. Mm. So that was going to be life changing. Yeah. Right. And then he had the incarceration situation. Yeah, because right. I was like, he was still yeah. like uh, Louisiana, like real tough Louisiana, mm-hmm. like Baton Rouge. Like, yep. he was still, you, you consider him underground when yep. he was still dropping this stuff. Yeah. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. And then he did the Isla. Isla went platinum and it catapulted him. And then he was saying, you know, his words exactly, man, I'm finna get back on this gangster shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He played me the song, let me hear it. I had my old lady, Shay, man. Shout out to my fiance, Brittany, man. Yeah. She laying in the bed. I turned it on speaker. Shay, Shay, it's Gates, it's Gates. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And I'm knowing, I'm knowing you know what, what this gonna mean. Do. Yeah. I'm knowing what this going to mean. And, like, I'm looking at his Instagram stories. Everybody he got in the car with him, that's the song he playing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he promoted it. Every yeah. hashtag yeah. was keep it G with me. He was promoting. I remember it. I remember it. Yeah, he was building it up. It was gonna be the same because he was saying he was. That was just keeping G with me. That's all I asked him. That's all I asked. You word up. Yes, and then when he got incarcerated, wiped everything. That's his two phones when he got incarcerated. Nah, that was on Isla. That was on Isla. That was on Isla. Mm -hmm. So when he got locked up, they had the uh, by any means two that came out next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his wife had creative control. So uh, she didn't, I don't know what happened. She didn't put the song put on the there. And, on yeah. You know what I'm saying? We connected after he got out. You know what I'm saying? I sent him a couple packs. I don't, he, You know, we didn't didn't actually do anything with them, but, you know, we connected, though. Yeah. It's good to yeah. just keep that relationship open, that business sure. relationship open. Though. For sure. sure though. Still promising. Because, I mean, anytime, you know. Yeah, you, you never know. It. Was he the first? First what? Um, um, Big name with, to us, big name. Back then, to reach out and uh, mess with one of your beats, you up personally. Yeah, yeah, he was, bro. Okay, yeah, yeah, he pretty much was. Like the Rocco situation, we actually had Rocco and Little Rock when he did did his verse for a song. You know what I'm saying? Real cool dude. You know what I'm saying? He linked up. You know, we followed each other. He changed numbers. You know. You know, that's one of my favorite artists too. You Rocko, know what I'm saying? Rocko so that was kind of big. Rocco had a nice yeah. had a couple. Of, he had enough, uh, yeah. nice. That was that you. That was that you don't even know, Ron. Too. Yeah, I used to be yeah. a big Rocco fan. Man, I'm a yeah. big Rocco Back fan. In 06, 07, 08. Yeah. Yeah. So like, people don't even know. Like, you know, I got footage of us in the studio, me playing beats to him, me rocking his head. Like that shit was. That was enough for me to be like, all right, nigga, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm done, man. I ain't, I ain't got nothing else to do, man. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Your yeah. first beat that you, you made, like, trash. What, what equipment did you have? Trash. What did you use, though? <laughs> yeah, man, same thing I've been using, you know, this whole way, man. It's Fruity Loops, man. FL Studio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. FL Studio, man. You know, first beat was trash. Sound like something off uh, Nintendo. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, was it you or just like the equipment? Because I mean, you use you use the program Fruity Loops, but yeah. I mean, you still got different like uh, equipment and stuff. Where you, you just have to upgrade your stuff, or yeah, you just up, update your sounds, man. You know what I'm saying? As you go, you yeah. know, you know, it's 
as you keep going, the better your sound progresses. You know what I'm well, saying? I got a question. So, because you hear a lot of people, and I I notice myself like, um, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you don't want to listen to too much when you're a creator because you start to like, uh, like unconsciously like make those type of sounds or yeah. like do something like you know like this. So, mm-hmm. is it a thing where you try to stay away from certain stuff or like? Have Man, you caught yourself making something to sound like something else? Honestly, though, you gotta you gotta adapt to the you know to the wave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you got your big producers like Dre and you know them type of you yeah, know mustard, just blaze mustard. Yeah, yeah. You know they got yeah. their specific sound, so the artists are. Going to them for, for their sound. sound. Yeah. You know, when you're an up and coming producer, man, you got to ride the way, man. Yeah. As sad as it sounds, you know, but, you know, the artists are coming to you, man, can you make something sound like this? And yeah. it's either you can do it or you can't, you know? Yeah. Do you do you feel some type of way if, if an artist come, in, come to you and want to make you, make you sound, make the music sound like some another producer? Nope. <laughs> you're going to do it. No, I'm going to do it. If yeah. I can do it, I'm yeah. going to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they're coming to you off their relationship. Like, I can go to this dude and get that beat, but I've, yeah. I'd rather give you the opportunity to try to yeah. make Yeah. So, yep. yeah. so, you know, what a lot of artists do now, you know, in these times, they pretty much just go on YouTube and steal the beat. You know, and if they get into an issue with, with the producer, they'll find another producer to remake it. Yeah. You know, and that's the game now. You know, wow. that's kind of why I kind of steered away from it. You know what I'm saying? Do you yeah. do you rather somebody just shop with you, or do you rather like cooking up on the spot with an artist? I shop with me. Yeah, yeah. That way, you know, just like we were just talking about, it's it's giving me my own, you know, create creativity. Yeah, you're not steering what I'm making. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Okay. It's organic. Yeah, yeah, I like to do it my own, man, and bring you into my sound. And yeah. then if you like it, I can go back and tweak whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yep, yep. So, so you, you when you when you while you while you're in the era of doing all this, what did it do to the the Arkansas culture, the hip hop culture? Man, I think I had a a big influence on it, bro. It you know, did. people people don't really you know because what it is, our area is behind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, our area is far behind everybody exposure. in the state. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it, you know, people don't really, un- you know, a lot of people that knew, they knew, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of people that didn't, they just didn't, you know what I'm saying? But I think I had a big effect, you know, I I, I put a, put the light on this area and shine the light, you know, I brought a lot of artists down here for performances, you know. Yeah. You know, I shine the light on our area. Yeah. And you brought the, you brought some big name artists in yeah. their prime. In their prime. In their prime, like, you, so you know that bag had to be right, you yep, know what yep, I'm yep. Yeah, man, it's, you know, I just... I always want it. You know, it's just, you know, when you're coming up, it's like, damn, bro, I couldn't go to this concert and we weren't able to do this. You know, I'm able to bring these artists to our area and these people, you know, I see walking down the street, they, you know, and I'm not overpricing. I'm not charging $50 a ticket. It's, yeah. you, can, you can get the pre-sale for $10, 15 yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I'm, I'm charging reasonable prices and letting people see these artists that they've been listening to their whole life. I said, were you doing all the, like, uh, shows and bringing folks over to UAM? Yeah. That was you? That was me. Okay. Yeah. See, I was in Jonesboro at the time, but I used to hear, like, folks mm-hmm. steady, like, having concerts, concerts at UAM yeah. and all this stuff. So yeah. I didn't know that was you. Yeah, that was me, man. You know, with a couple of my partners, man, we, we, we put put together a lot of shit. Yeah, that's what's up. Man. Yeah. What do you think um, separates you from the rest of producers in Arkansas or – in our area, because, of course, there's a lot of them that's, you know, mm-hmm. messing around with beats and stuff like that. Man, I you know what? It ain't, to me, I don't really think it's, it's anything special about what I do. It, it got to be, though. I think, honestly, I think it's just, you know, being at the right place at the right time. Yeah, really, I think time played a big, a, a big role in it, you okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. Because there's a lot of producers in Arkansas that's way doper than me. I tell them when I see them, I tell them all the time, like, bro, I don't even know how you created that shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay, give me some names um, outside of you. Who you who you like? Man, Don Damn Key, Motif, uh, Ferocious, man. Uh, man, I don't want to miss nobody. Uh, Big J, the man from Pine Bluff. Hey. Man, Big J, hey. J don't be playing. Mellow man. Boy Beats from Conway. They be sleeping on them, man. Um. Damn, I don't want to miss nobody, dog. You put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Space. Space. Yeah, yeah. Space. Yeah, yeah. 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 Space Detroit, been going Detroit hard. Boys on yeah. Shit, yeah. Man, it's a lot of producers, man. Yeah. It's a lot of producers. A lot of them are dope. And I think it's it's the reason why a lot of these Arkansas artists are finally getting their recognition because, you know, the sound is progressing. Mm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think that, so that sound, man, it's, it's I don't know, because I, I feel like back when... 
back when um we had the um what was that? Not the party boys, but the guys from over there in Blyville. Oh, I ain't see, I ain't they had one. they had um Somebody Party young. Hard. Party that little song they had, Blyville, they had a nice little run, but they were like yeah. the franchise boys. They had mm-hmm. like a little oh, group. See, does Arkansas mm-hmm. have a sound though? Like what is like Yeah, we I do. don't think I don't I it's hadn't sweet. heard anybody who's given Arkansas an identity yet. Honestly, oh, you go, nah, ahead, go ahead. Go but ahead. Honestly, bro, it's it's different sections. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the thing too. You know, base, it's based on the section. Like people in southeast don't sound like people in northeast. Mm-mm. People or even in Little southwest, Rock. you know. But really, I think the biggest problem with Arkansas is we in the middle of all these hot spots. <laughs> like Memphis is a super hot spot. You're really yeah. surrounded by Memphis, Louisiana, and Louisiana, and Texas. and Texas. And then you know, in the early years, Saint Missouri. Louis, yeah. So like we was in the middle of all that, so it blocked any chance of shine we had to get and out. And you really you know didn't have saying? to come through Arkansas. You didn't have to. You didn't have to come through. They Arkansas. would do those tours and skip over, skip over Little Rock. But you know what? Because I think like yeah, for yeah. as far as the music industry and stuff like that, like. Like geographically, I never knew about St. Louis because mm-hmm. all it takes is a high artist or a group. Because Nelly put St. Louis on the map for me, for sure. I never started hearing about for sure that until or like music like Boosie put Baton Rouge on the on the map yep. for me. You know what I'm saying? Like so, all it takes is a high artist to blow. I think Freddie doing that for us mm-hmm. now, like putting Arkansas as a state. But uh, yeah, Ooh, maybe uh, maybe he carrying it right now. That's it's 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 some niggas with some heat. <laughs> Them young boys from Blytheville, they hard. Who the, so styles, yeah, and don't nobody take offense to this. Who the biggest art- artist in Arkansas right now? Bankroll, like, bankroll. You gotta go to bankroll. Like, is he pe- the best or the biggest? He the biggest. I ain't gonna say he the best, but the thing is, like, who behind bankroll? J- biggest or best? Are we biggest. talking rap or artist? Period? No, we said biggest. Biggest. We ain't saying best rapper. Alive. Artist or <laughs> I'm saying artist. Period or I said rap. rap. Yeah, rap. Best rapper, okay. biggest rapper. Don't jump on. I'm just, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, bro. Um, I think a lot of people forget about Chris Eccles, man. Uh, that's who that's I was talking about. That's, 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 that's the writer Eccles from over there. Yeah, yeah. Chris, he's, he's, he's an artist, though. A lot, a lot the of scenes. the, yeah, but a lot of the, a lot of the, lot of the up and coming artists that's in like the that side of the state. Mm-hmm. He he dealt with them at a young age, yep. you know. Like he, he doing what I'm what yep. I'm doing. He yeah. did it. Like I'm I actually been to been to shows in Jonesboro. Yeah. I remember I remember I still got footage, dog. That nigga Flip Curry was on stage, you know. As what a I'm kid. Saying? As a young boy. As a kid. Like I still got the footage. I think yep. it was a young doll show. You know what I'm saying? Chris Eccles brought that nigga on stage. Like I seen the nigga pass the torch. You know what I'm saying? Real but, talk. And but, that's and I'm glad you said that, pass the torch, because mm-hmm. it's when when dealing with when dealing with when dealing with when you're an artist and you're trying to actually get to that next level, yeah. it's hard for some people to say, "Hey, come with me," yeah. or you know, mm-hmm. or you know what, I'm gonna sit back. It's your turn. Here you go, right here. Take off with it. Yeah, it's it's hard for that, you know. But we seeing that we was talking about Gucci with his artists and stuff like that now, yeah. and we seeing that a, a lot more often. So I, I think right now the Arkansas culture overall for music culture is 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 getting there. Yeah. It's not at its peak. It's it's definitely getting there. Though. Yeah, it's getting there for yeah. sure. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to 3J. He just signed with uh, Authentic Empire. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. Yep. Yeah, sure shout did. out to him. Yep, yep, yep. You know. Boom giving out them deals over there. Oh man. yeah. Oh yeah. Say, so, do you do you ever have like issues with people being from your hometown trying to work with you and it kind of get overwhelming or something like that? Cuz I'm sure you being you know that big of a impact or a person in, in mm-hmm. that area everybody trying to get it in and yeah. get some beats and work with you and things like that yeah you know earlier you know i used to have issues with that because people would reach out and uh want to work and i just wouldn't do it you know what i'm saying it it was just a situation where i felt like it was a one-way street like mm-hmm. i'm not benefiting anything from it like yeah. if i seen you working i get into a certain you know level and i felt like yeah. you were actually investing your time mm-hmm into your craft and taking this shit serious, then I would have reached out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't ever that. It was just, you know, man. What you can you know, do for me. Man, let me get a beat, man. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, I ain't really doing beats. I, bro, I ain't really got no beats. And then it turned to, oh, this nigga don't want to fuck with me. It wasn't, it, it was just one personal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's I just, think, yeah. I didn't, your, your mute, it, probably your quality wasn't there yet. Mm-hmm. Or you not taking it serious. You got one song out. You want me to give you a beat. Yeah. All right, and then I don't feel comfortable charging you what I think I deserve for a track. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So That's major, right? people yeah. don't think at it; they don't never look at it from that perspective. 
It's yeah. always I asked this nigga for something, he didn't give it to me. Yeah. Yeah, you I think a I'm lot saying? of people needed to hear that. Yeah, for that sure. Just within life period, when you see somebody successful and you somewhat connected to them and, and you feel like they got they gotta uh they want know, hand pull you up, you yeah. know what yeah. I mean? When you ain't putting no work yeah, in you yourself. No work in, it's the gratification. He yeah. there, so I, I he can he can put me up there right there. You know, he put a lot of work in and you ain't see the, the blood, sweat and tears, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, if you definitely if you ain't working for it, you you ain't gonna appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. It's just what it is, man. And like you know, the people that I'm working with now, even a couple of them can tell you, like, you know, we don't have words. You know, where you know had situations where they upset because what I, you know, they want me to do something for them and I'm not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they can also come back and tell you, man, when I got on my shit, that nigga Styles reached out for me, bro, and that nigga gave me some game or he did this or. I'm, I done helped somebody out in, in, in some way, shape, or form. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I, I got to see you take that step forward. Dope. Mm-hmm. Hey, right. So right now, who, what artists do Young Styles have or work with? Man, I'm working with everybody, man. But my main focus is our area right now. You know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why you know, I picked up the camera. You know, yeah. I felt like everybody in the state had representation but us you but know us. you couldn't see us you were, you could possibly hear about us as at, at a show or something but you couldn't see us you know you couldn't go on youtube and find nobody here you know what i'm saying the last time you know i really seen artists you know from from my area you know just shining with videos and stuff was was the homie here you know what i'm saying who's that the heavy hitters. Heavy oh, hitters. Heavy hitters. Them heavy. You know, shout yeah. out to the heavy hitters. You mm. know what I'm saying? I remember, yep. Yeah, I remember seeing them niggas. You know what I'm saying? Seeing them niggas' videos, right? They was doing videos yeah. back before back YouTube gap. was yeah. even created. Yeah. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. And then we had people, you know, shout out to my home buff line. You know, he started with the videos and kind of slacked off of it, but he put put a couple people in, in the he position. Did. But it wasn't, it wasn't ever a platform that could actually give everybody the light that they needed, and I feel like I'm doing that now. You are. You yeah. definitely are, and you can. It's it's it definitely shows in the social media world because mm-hmm. these artists they tapping in before they go up to Little Rock and work with this cameraman. They they down here now. Yeah, and yeah. I I noticed you pulling you pulling some from El Dorado, Warren. Yeah. You know they coming to you. Now. Yeah, they hitting you up. So that yeah. that's major, man. Yeah, man. I'm just I'm just trying to give them that light because we got talent. I think we got the best rappers in Arkansas. You know what I'm saying? I, I argue with them Northeast niggas all the time, man. I'm telling. <laughs> Southeast Arkansas, I'm going to say South Arkansas got the best rappers in Arkansas. All right, so who your top five in wow, South Arkansas? Right? South Arkansas? Yeah, South Arkansas. You know, I'm going to be political. I can't. Oh, man. Nah, uh-uh. I can't nah, do it, bro. Man. It's the, I can't do it, man. Hey, there's, there's no hard feelings behind this. I can't do yeah. it, man. I uh, I fool with everybody, bro. It's some hard, hard artists, man. All right, All right so, so I'm going to give you a list then. Nope, I'm going to give you nope, a list. Nope, let's do this. You got a five track. You got a five tra- record label come to Styles and say we want a five track mm-hmm. album from the hottest artists in Arkansas. I don't want no specific order. Who going on the album in Arkansas? In Arkansas, we talking about the South, our section. Okay, if we gonna talk about the South, uh, A State Band Runners, Band Runners, yeah, for sure. Like, LV, I, I think them probably is is a collective. Besides A One, Chris Eccles them. I think that's the the most talented collective in the state. Yeah, like in the past ten years, their creativity is is out of the world. Too. Yeah, man, the new boys next level. So I say A State Band Runners. Okay. Uh, my KC partners. You know what I'm saying? You, you taking whole, all of them? All of them, man. We got to take the whole collective. <laughs> they going on one track. Yeah, man. Everybody, man. That's uh, good. They have yeah, to split them. Yeah. Bear Boogie, KC, Lowe's. Yeah. Uh, who else? Yaki, Lindrell Jones, like all them boys, man. You finna make a three. It's an eight minute song. <laughs> and they, they got to split the bars. They go back to back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, yeah, man. Um, my homeboy from here, Poppy G. You know, Poppy G. I think Poppy G cold, bro. That little nigga so cold to me, man. You know, Poppy G style is is a little di- is a little it's different. A little different. Yeah. It's different, and mm-hmm. it's not it's not no wave running because he came into it, yeah, the like rap that. game like yeah. that. You know, yeah. yeah I remember yeah. when um I first sent um Poppy G song to P. P was like, mm-hmm. "Where he from? He hard, yeah. You know, hard. And, and he he is hard. Yeah, right from Alabama, for sure. Um, let me see the last two. I would say uh my homeboy Salsa Don Julio. So Sudan, who yeah, he over there in Monticello. He tough, he tough. And then last, probably uh, Corey Swagger. Corey he from Swagger. McGee. 
But he in North Northwest Arkansas. He in Northwest, but no, he, he from McGee. From he from McGee. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, you left some people off. I'm just well, saying. You no, he didn't. This, I'm no, just you saying, didn't. No, that's all, no because, I, was just, I was expecting to hear some different names. Like, nah, like, because these are some of the hardest. It's I can no keep offense going. to y'all, but these are some of the hardest working artists in Arkansas that he just named. They relevant. They still putting out content, mm-hmm. and they putting themselves out there. So I I get where you're going with that. Yeah. Hey, it's no offense. He didn't leave y'all off. Don't go mad at say I can keep naming. You want me to keep going, bro? I respect you, Liz. Like, like, who, who, who would you say? Just out of the southeast, yeah. I was expecting to hear for sure here. Uh, Bay Biz. Young Who? Bay. Yeah, Young Bay, for sure. Young Bay. Young Bay, um, for sure. Uh, shit. Nick the with the K? Nick with the K. But my, that, I I was, my, that was my next my question. See, like, if I go to the bluff, they don't count. Yeah, yeah, the bluff is the Southwest, count, Southeast would, Arkansas. Would, yeah. They but, just got CR. Uh, hey, but I'm going to keep it 100. What's the player from uh, Pine, I mean, Pine Bluff that came back? Huh? Quiz. Oh, Quiz. Quiz. His, his tape was hard as hell. All them tape, niggas hard, Quiz bro. had the hardest you know tape in Arkansas. Yeah, bro. That sounds like a real, like, real talk. Real, like, a universal, like, put out type tape. You know what I'm saying? And the other boy I'm missing. In Palm Bluff? Yeah. No, uh, CK? CK was hard. CK was hard to me. He had a, he, he's been up, but he ain't, been, he ain't been his constant no more. But two or three years ago, uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Eastside, Eastside was one of them guys. Uh, he had a nice run. But no, I respect you. And I know they more from Palm Bluff, but I just like Bay. Bay yeah. Um, you know, like that, I said. Uh, that, is, was Nick, that your top five? Who? That was your top five? I don't know my top five. I was just expecting yeah. to hear some of them names. Yeah. There. Like, you know, if, if you well, ask somebody from Pine Bluff, they you know, they're they going to say. Yeah, we don't count Pine Bluff in Southeast Arkansas. I count them. Man, I no, count you don't. You didn't just bro, name them. Pull the map up. Saying, you just I, I got pull a, the map up. You know what I'm up. saying? Yeah. I got to rip them up. Right yeah. Hey. I got to rip them up. Central people. Arkansas? Little Arkansas, Central Arkansas. Little Arkansas, Pine Bluff, hey, Arkansas. That's South, Southeast. I would, I would think it's Southeast. Pine Bluff, nah, Southeast. They, they, I want to tell you how they Southeast. Pull the map up, man. They, they got to see our school in Pine Bluff. They got to be see Southeast. Man. Hey, they got to be, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. Saying. They really were going to put it in Dumas. But you know how they go. <laughs> Yeah, man, man, bro. Come on, man. The blood. But that's people. a nice that's a nice list though. Yeah, like I can keep going, man. I ain't trying to lean nobody off, but you put me on the spot, you know. Shout out to the boys and in the you, blood. They yeah. raw. We're like real they raw. raw, raw. Man, I heard um big big K swear today. Hard. Man, he hard. Yeah, he hard. Hard. yeah, he hard. Man, it's some females, man. Yeah. Shout out to um, the girl, uh Aviana Leo, she raw. My yeah. homeboy Taylor Flood, he raw. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of raw people. It's just you can't put everybody on the list. So what do you think is the biggest like besides like I guess like visual exposure? What do you what do you what do you think is holding back a lot of Arkansas artists? Um, it's I don't even think that. I think it's just time, bro. It's like, you know, we started late. You know, and we gotta we gotta build it up, you know what I'm saying? But like, you able to go tap into a studio and put this I mean, you know, you you could shoot it from your phone right now. Yeah, you can, but you know it ain't gonna be the same result as shooting it from an actual camera. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, just putting music out. Just I'm just like, putting the music out. Like, man, I think that I think I think I think uh, everything is oversaturated right now, though. You know what I'm saying? Because of that, because people go to the studio today and put the music out the next day. It's no plan behind. It. It's just drop, 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 drop. And then us as the consumers have gotten to the point where. We consume so much music. We listen to some, you know, today and then next week. We I get probably burned out on big again. artists. Like yeah. it's some of my favorite albums I listen to for two yeah. weeks and then. I think some artists got too much pride, bro. Yeah. Because I was watching the uh, Rainwater interview and he was like, "They still beat the street." Yeah. You know, they still hand out CDs. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, and, and since the social media wave is like everybody want to go away from actually putting in. The, the work to yeah. get, to get it out there, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure that. You know, you got to touch the streets. You know, that's what, that's how we came up. We came up at the backpack, CD hand to hand. Yeah, you know, flyers would, on the doors. Man, we would, man, we would, we would print up CDs. We would start May the 1st, bro. And we would print up CDs all the way up to the third weekend of May for Crawfish Festival mm. and sell them $10 uh, yeah. a pop and make, Oh, make you're making 1500 some money. Yeah. 2000 dollars in a weekend. You know what I'm saying? Just hand to hand. That's how we yeah. came up. So I still believe in that. I still believe in putting up posters. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I still believe Street in all teams. that, dog. Yeah. Is it is it any is it ever any artist that don't want nothing from you, don't want no beef from you, but just reach out, just want some advice, just want some game? It's yeah. hard. 
Yeah, you know, all the time. You know, that's pretty much what I'm here for. Yeah. Like, I'm going to give you the game even if I feel like, if, even if you don't ask for it, if I think you need it and you're going to listen, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the game. You know, that's, that's like I just said, I feel like that's my purpose. You know, I said it, me and, me and Papa G was in, in uh, what's, this, what's the spot right outside of here? Mitchellville. Mitchellville, man. We supposed to be oh, yeah, shooting yeah. a video. We sat out there on this on this people porch for like an hour and a half. You know, talking about, you know, how to how to move your money and make everything legit, getting LLCs and starting business bank accounts, you know, shit that, that, that you know, nigga ain't going to tell them because they don't really know. Speaking you know what I'm of uh, the, the business side, yeah, was there anybody that, you know, assisted you with, you know? No. I, I can say the, um, the, the person that I learned from was D-Dirt. Okay. With those studios, like, you know, he kind of molded me. He, that's the nigga, that, you know, he kind of brought me along, too. Yeah. Okay. You know, I can't forget him. Like, that was the first team in Arkansas, like, that, you know, would come. I, like, I was at UAM. They would come down to UAM and get beats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And mm. I remember when I first moved to Little Rock, you know, when I actually went to the studio when I first moved to Little Rock and ran into my homeboy, Young Two. Like, Young Two seen me. He was like, bro, you Styles? I was like, yeah, that's me, man. He was like, I got something for you. Hold on. Nigga went and brought me a bag of money. What? Real talk, yeah. bro. Nigga, first nigga, he dropped the bag on me. Like, bro, I've been getting nigga rapping off your beats and doing this and that. Like, it's forever love with that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. So you yeah. went to college at UAM, right? Yep, yep. What, uh, do you think a lot of your, your relationships with people like that maybe outside of Arkansas came from your college experience? Um, that, 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 that have a direct tie to what you're doing now? Nah, not really. Okay. Not really. I think I think I reached majority of the people outside of Arkansas through social media, bro. Okay. Yeah, P pretty much. Yeah. But um, so what? When speaking of UAM, what's your degree in? Uh, computer information systems. Do you mm. do, ha, do you or have you ever had a job? Yeah, actually, man. Um, I thought you just worked for yourself. Like, yeah. Nah, see how it played out. You know, I was um after I graduated, I was around the area for probably like a year or two. I ended up. First, you know, it's God working mysterious ways. I had my first interview, man, out of college with uh, HP. It was mm -hmm. in Conway. Conway. Mm -hmm. It was in yeah. Conway. So I get on the road and drive all the way to Conway <laughs> and and get up there, bro, and lose the directions. <laughs> Yeah. Never make it to the interview, bro. Oh, what man. you was using a map quest, uh, right bro? There, that was that was like that was like when you know I had a, a little cheap phone. I didn't even have internet on it. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. looked up the. Looked up the directions before I got there. Took my ass all the way to and got lost. <laughs> Damn. Bro. Never made it to the interview. And then, I ain't going to lie, bro. Like, I went to a period, like, after I graduated where I lost my job. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm filling out interviews after interviews. And, you know, my only source of income was music. Mm. Like, I was actually making four, or $500, you know, probably every three, four days just off beats. Mm. Selling twenty five, twenty dollar beats, bro. And that's offline or just online, in? bro. Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying through Sound. It was a, a website called SoundClick back then. Mm -hmm. You could actually put your beats out, and people would lease them. And yeah, you know, oh, I was yeah. 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 making like twenty five thousand. Bro, I, a day. I was actually wow. able to pay my yeah. rent through SoundClick. Real but, I mean, yeah. I like How listening many? back to old interviews. Gates was like that. He was like when well, he was telling people like he, somebody asked him like give him some game back on picking beats stuff like that. He mm -hmm. was like, bro, I'll just go on YouTube and go through the internet. Yeah, he was like, they own there. You can get them. You can get them. So em. how how long were you able to sustain that? Man, I did that for probably about until I got that job. So it was probably like a six month run, bro. Six month run. Six month run. I ended up getting that job at uh, at Windstream. So I got wow. a job at Windstream. I came in as a network analyst. I you did had that. the directions that time. Yeah, I had to <laughs> yeah. 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 Was that LM Windstream or just Windstream? No, nah, it was just Windstream. You talking about LM? Yeah, you talking about Windpower? Yeah, Windpower. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got lost there, but I ended up finding my way, man. I got hired on the spot, and you know, I did that for about you know six years, but man, I hated it, bro. You I hated, hated working it. for somebody else, bro. It was everything. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Learn, you know, finally getting getting into the corporate world and figuring out how everything works. It's not, yeah. you know, like. I was there for for six years, probably five out of the six years there. 
I probably outperformed everybody on the whole floor, like my whole entire time there. Wow. But when it's time to get a promotion, I can't get a promotion mm-hmm. because it's all about relationships. And, mm-hmm. yeah. you know what I'm saying? It was, you know, I, I, politics. Yeah, it was politics, bro. And, you know what I'm saying? And got to the point I said, man, you know, and that in dealing with, you know, corporate cuts, you know, they cutting people to, they, to yeah, meet their quota mean, in, yeah. at, in the for first quarter, quarter. For quarter, you hear 100 people get fired. And like you know, and like I went through two cuts where, like it was it was situations where we sitting on the floor, and you don't know who leaving. Yeah. Like they come and tapping people on their shoulder, calling them in the office, giving them severance packages. Like I went through that twice, and then this last time I was just like, I can't do it, bro. My mind was already made. You know, I'm saving. I'm finna save my money. I got this 401k set up still. I'm still putting money in my 401k. Time presented itself, man. And fourth quarter again. Got cut. Now it came up. They they gave us the option to leave oh, and so leave with a leave. severance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I had money saved. I ended up getting like a twenty five thousand dollars severance package, and I said, "Man, I can do this shit on my own, bro." You know what I'm saying? So how difficult was that for you? Because you you I mean, it was a little bumpy for you, but you yeah. was established as styles already. Yeah, you know you 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 was already making beats and working with people. Mm-hmm. How how difficult was you difficult was it for you to go to to that nine to five? When you know, really, if I just apply myself a little more, I could really get it out in the streets. Man, it, but when I left, bro, I didn't, I didn't know if I could do it or not. I just bet on myself. But you know, the thing about it, when I was actually working there, I pretty much just used that job to fund everything that I wanted to do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I was running the club in Durham, I, and the owner was, you know, charged me a thousand dollars a month. No, how much did he charge me? I, I think it might have been two thousand. Hmm. Might have been a thousand or two thousand dollars a month. I can't remember the exact number. So each month you, you know knew you saying? started off with ten thousand. You got to pay. Somebody. I got to pay it back. So I'm thinking, I think it was two thousand because of five. Uh, yeah, two thousand dollars a month. So I had that bill on top of my living expenses, and then I have children, and I got utilities at my home and the club. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a lot of overhead, but I'm using my job to fund. You know what I'm doing. You know outside of my job. You know what I'm saying? But it, Beat me in the ass, you know what I'm saying? You know, working, you know, being, bringing in. The one mistake I think I made with that was not hiring people based on, you know, them doing the job or hiring them just based on being the homies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it beat me in the ass because, like, we would open up the club. to say we do an event, you know, we open up the club and we we get 200 people in there. We charge them $10. Okay, I make $1,000. They making money off the bar. You know what I'm saying? End of the night, I don't get bar money because they're my homies. I'm letting them keep the bar money. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still paying security. I'm still paying people to work the door. I'm yeah. still paying this and that. Then I still got to pay the bills. Yeah. But y'all just, you know what I'm saying, just get money. A little quick lick. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, they never kicking back in for none of the bills or utility. Yeah. So I'm being myself, but I'm me trying to keep it it's all the way 100. So love, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm pushing it to the side, but at the same time, it's like, damn, like, nigga, this your dream. You know what I'm saying? The, the thing about it, man, you know, I feel like the big guy, he, uh, he, when he bless you, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times your blessings are for you. And when you try to bring other people into your blessings, he'll take that shit from you. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what it was. It was a blessing in disguise. And the crazy thing about it, man, I actually went to a um, I went to a retreat with my homeboy Tracy, Tracy Bell, dog. Yeah, Bell. Yeah. He had me speaking, dog. Crazy, bro. So I'm up there speaking, you know, trying to motivate the youth and everything. I run into a guy I never seen before in my life. You know what I'm saying? He said, you know, he got a message that. Shut the club down in three days, and I'm going to be blessed for it. That's what he told you? Swear to God. Didn't know it from a can of paint. Did you shut it down? I shut it down in three days, bro. And I, <laughs> hey, and I'm, next year, I'll be five years self-employed, bro. You ain't hesitate? You ain't I think ain't about hesitate, it? You hesitate, bro. You was burnt out, bro, though. I believe I was already burnt out, you know what I'm saying? And then I felt, you know, like, you know, you just had that feeling like but shit I ain't just, right. I just got a message. Yeah. I just got a message right now. What's that? Nah, just- <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, kind of you know, sometimes you you be already leaning towards yeah, something, yeah, and then yeah. it, you just need the extra push. Yeah, you know what I'm so saying? Did, yeah, I know the, so yeah. Did, did the the events that that happen like at parties because like a lot of pe- a lot of times stuff that happen at parties they don't look at it like little little JoJo 
started this fight with such and such. It don't matter what goes on at a venue. It mm-hmm. comes back to you. Uh, whoever that, promoted it. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and, that's, and, and that's the thing that used to be on my conscience, too. I didn't want no blood on my hand. Yeah. You know, honestly, I can say that the crazy thing about it, though, out of all the events we ever had at that club when I was running it, bro, I was never there when a shooting happened. Mm. Like we had three or four shootings at that club. And it's so crazy, bro, that I've never been there every time it happened. Like, never there. Like, we had one Thanksgiving night. I had to be at work the next day. I left, like, at 2 o'clock in the morning. They calling me when I'm in Pine Bluff. Bro, they just shot up the club. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, situations like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's crazy. I can't explain it, bro, but I've never been at that club and, and the shooting has happened, bro. And then, you know, you know, the little knick-knack fights, you know, a nigga able to break them up and yeah. resolve the issue. But for the most part, we had that shit set up where everybody in the Southeast was rocking. Rocking, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't never we ain't never used to be cool with Eudora. Eudora <laughs> used to be in there deeper than Dermot sometimes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it got to that point. You know, it was all love, you know, but I just wasn't feeling it, bro. It was just something about it. Just come with, I mean, just time in your life. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you hit maturity too, and I mean, like I said, you you a family man. You you got you a full time job and yeah. take care of the stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's a, hard to have a, a a good positive foundation in a negative space too, though. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Cause the energy, bro. Like you feel the energy. Yeah. And you know, I you know, I I don't drink. I don't drink or smoke. Mm-hmm. So I'm in there. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching people mm-hmm. like. The thing about it, man, you watch people, bro. You, people act so different, dog. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They act different. You peep out their mannerism. You see so and so, so and so trying to creep. Like you mm-hmm. peep the whole scene. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, I'm the only one in here sober, bro. Like I ain't, you know. But I have to be that way because I have to nip shit in the bud before it escalates. Yeah, you know good. what I'm saying? I'm Proactive. watching. I'm DJing. I'm walking around. I'm watching. I'm peeping. I'm looking at people's faces. I'm knowing who into it with who. So. Got to make sure that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just one of them situations, man. I was blessed, you know, to... I ain't had no casualties on my hands, so I can't... You know, I say I'm blessed for that, man. Have, have yeah. you ever been in a situation where you had, like, a creative block? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Especially with the beats. Yeah. You just... Man, it, it get rough. Like, I used to get through... Go through patches of weeks, you know, not, not being able to do anything. You know, you just got to walk away from it. You know, I try to listen to something that inspires you, and hopefully you pull something from it. Is there any beats out there that you gonna put out that you feel like, man, I could have did something a little bit, put a little bit more energy in there to make it harder? Nah, nah, nah. Because the thing about it, I ain't, I ain't gonna export the beat until I feel like it's where it's at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, I ain't never had that. Everything you didn't put out there for artists to use or listen to, you feel like I felt like it was good. Ain't gotta touch it no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. So moving into the 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 clothing, mm-hmm. how did you come about with that? Man, this on my uh, like I'm saying, like 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 this ain't this a lot of this stuff ain't nothing new. Like I started in in junior high. Like I used to make shirts with with the cartoon characters on them and stuff for the homies. You know what I'm saying? You used to earn them all. Nah, homies? I used to draw them. Damn. Oh, mm-hmm. really? I used to paint. I used to paint. You know what I'm saying? Throw paint splashes on them. You know, we used to bleach the jeans back yeah, then. Yeah, just I, been a creative person. Yeah, man. Man, I just yeah. always been creative, man. You know, I used to do, you know, headbands for the basketball teams. I remember I did the whole Holly Grove team headbands. And <laughs> just, you know, I just always been able to be creative. And it's just something that over the years has just progressed and molded and molded. You how, know what I'm saying? How you kept Grandma for where Holly, I, I was just thinking that Holly Grove by Stuttgart. My, 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 my uncle, my uncle was the head coach. Oh, love yeah. Hey, I was like, is it a Holly Grove down there? Real talk, man. I used to go down to Holly Grove in the summer, man. Them boys, man, you talking about a small town had some hoopers? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, my God. I think they they had them Knox boys down there, man. Them niggas were so raw, dog. Yeah, but yeah, so. man, yeah, you know. So it's just, just something I always been doing, man. I used to, you know, I just came up, progressed, progressed, progressed. I started going through uh, one of the homies from Little Rock. Had them printing up shirts and stuff for me, and uh, my homeboy Fi Samuel for fingerprint images. He actually stopped me, was like, man, why you spending money doing that, man? You could do it yourself. You know, he walked me into, you know, starting to create and do the shit my own. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Wow. Yep. That's crazy. So. The Work Nation yeah. media. What do, what are you planning to take that? Honestly, bro, I'm just I'm just winging it, dog. I'm winging it. 
Like, niggas be having these business plans on what they trying to do and how they going to do it. Man, I'm just going with the flow, bro. Yeah. I'm going with the flow, man. I, a couple years yeah. ago, a couple years ago, I was going to hit you up and say, man, let me run work, the, Let me run that. The, yeah. Just the digital media part of that. Yeah. Because I like interacting with people mm-hmm. and everything. And, st- and I don't care about staying in the loop, mm-hmm. but I like getting the relevant stuff out yeah. there. You know what I mean? And, that, and I think that's my biggest problem, man. I don't like interacting, bro. Like, I'm, I'm to myself. You know what I'm saying? I have to. It's crazy. You know, I have to I have to yeah. interact with people. So, you know, I put on a face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but if I can, I stay in the house, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, but when I have to put on that face, I got to put it on and do it. But I'm, I'm really, bro, I'm. I'm an introvert, like a motherfucker. Me too. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, t- I was telling LJ uh, a while back, like, man, because I watch him. He go and introduce himself. He talk to everybody. I can't do that. Yeah, right. But and I was like, bro, that's one going to be my challenge. I'm trying to get out of there because yeah. I understand the importance of meeting people and having relationships. Exactly. And, you know, building for real. You know, exactly. a lot of things come from, you know, being proactive with, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that type of thing, yeah. Yeah, you'll go as far as the people you introduce yourself to, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Real talk, bro. That, that's me, man. I'm, I'm really an introvert, dog. That, but that it seemed like introverts be the most creative people, though, because you could be. Because think about this, though. Introverts don't care to be out there. Cause they in their head. But they, yeah. The, 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 crea- the, the creativity yeah. comes from yeah. the, the, the mind, time. bro. My, and I'm you gonna my. be your biggest like critic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like yep. yeah, but yeah. that's I mean, look, this is why Styles is here mm-hmm. now. Style, where your, where your birthday? Uh, I'm a Gemini, bro. Okay. What, yeah, that June makes sense. Or, uh, May. May. May what? May 25th. Okay. Yours yeah, is June 4th. So yeah. Like Aries, huh? mm-hmm. Yeah, that's man. But uh, that's real, though, dog. Like, I, it's been times I done drove from Little Rock to Durham out with no music on. I'm just a whole yeah. trip. I do that. All I do that, night. too. I drive, yeah. I drive like that on the ride home. Man, I'm talking about, <laughs> I'll be deep in my thoughts. Like, damn, like, I should have did this. I, I need to do this. And, Man, it's crazy, bro. So what's your, crazy. what's your relationship like with, with family? Like, has family always been, like, that that push that, you know, like, um, say, for instance, in the South, mm-hmm. you know, we have – family is, like, a big thing. So we have people like uncles, nephews mm-hmm. – oh, not nephews, uncles, aunts, aunties, every, aunties, uncles, everybody that push us and yeah. everything. So what's your relationship like with your family? Um – I mean, I always had a good relationship with my family. You know what I'm saying? My my dad wasn't, you know, he was in and out. You know what I'm saying? He was Rolling Stone, man. <laughs> Is that your dad's real name? John Gotti? Yeah. Nah, John Carpage. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. see. I see that John Gotti. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so, you know, moms did the best she could do. You know, she ra- I think she raised a pretty good young man. You know what I'm saying? My family, you know, we... Always a close knit family on both sides, my mom's side and my dad's side. You know, my mom's side, you know, it's fifteen of them. And my dad's side, wow. I think it's like eight or nine of them. You know, you what got I'm siblings, saying? huh? You got Me? siblings, man. I got ten. Well, it's what? ten of us. You got how ten you, siblings. Well, it's ten of us. I'm how, the oldest. How do you, how do you uh, say no? No. No, for real. <laughs> That's the thing. Like you know, the thing about it, man. Me and my siblings, like I said, my dad was moving around a lot, so okay. we weren't really close. Oh, you know okay. So how many siblings you got on your mama's side? None. I'm my only oh, child. Oh, only child. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. All That's my why siblings, you're an introvert. Bro, my dad got ten kids, ten different women. Yeah, Sound about right. Wow. It's cold. The same boat. <laughs> you know, cold. <laughs> same boat. Me. We just oh, oh God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, yeah, man. You know, I think, um, I think early on in the years, I think my work ethic came from my grandfathers. Both of them were hardworking men. You know what I'm saying? My grandpa, Big Hawk. You know, he he instilled the work ethic in me. He would bring me with him. You know, started me young. I would mow yards and weed eat with him. He'd be gone all day. You know what I'm saying? I want to have fun and play, but now I understand and I want to spend money too. So you know. Yeah. Regret leaving, but you know, I always be happy on the way home when I get paid. But you know, my grandpa, you know, like, like I respect him so much, man. Like, had a stroke earlier, you know, later, later on in life, you know, and still had to provide, had 15 kids to provide for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and like, I'm seeing my grandpa get up every day, every morning, work hard, limping, barely can use one side of his body because of the stroke. Mm. But he getting on this line more, you know what I'm saying, taking me with him, he working. And I can say, you know, my 
my grandpa died right before I graduated high school. And I can honestly say all those years, I've never seen him complain. Mm. Wow. Like I've never seen my grandpa complain about anything. You know what I'm saying? And that do something to you, you know, you when you get older and realize, yeah, like, realize how powerful that is. Like, like men go through and just yes. the responsibilities. Yes. I, I, can, I, I can say the same. Both of my grandpa, my grandpa Willie and my grandpa Eddie. Mm-hmm. But you just, that just was a, was an old school thing. Like, yeah. you, you're not going to be soft. You're not going to complain. Just yep. And, you know, just just men just carried themselves like men back then. You yeah, know they know did. They did, man. And I, I think that, you know, that, that was always instilled in me, man. You know what I'm saying? That, and I feel like I'm still living out some of my grandparents' prayers. You know what I'm saying? I think that's I think that's what's carrying me on this far and keeping me on the path that I'm on. You know what I'm saying? For sure. For but, yeah, sure. man, I, you know, family is important to me. You know, my family did the best they could raise me. I never was a really a bad child, you know, I, just like anybody else. Yeah. You know, we got into our fights. How, you know, we yeah. thought we was in the streets and – Want to sell weed and do all this little dumb shit, you know? Yeah. You know, trying to fit in, you know? Basically, everything, all the trouble I got into was basically me trying to fit, trying in. To fit in. I was always different, you know what I'm saying? My my mind always worked different. I always knew it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got to do, you know, you socializing with everybody, so you got to move a certain way, do certain things when you're a kid because you want to fit in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, family was everything to me. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, you know, I learned a lot, did a lot. I don't have no complaints, man. I love where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? It's instilled in me deep. You know what I'm saying? So, I got no complaints, dog. Who, the, who does DJ Styles vent to, though? Not necessarily complain, but sometimes you just got to get the shit off your chest. You Myself. Know? Like, man, black men, dog, we don't really have that luxury, dog. Go we'll see a therapist, bro. Yeah, I, you know, I talk to my old lady about that all the time. I, You know, some of my homeboys, you know, I talk. Well, I take that back. Some of my homeboys, you know what I'm saying, like K Love, Lil D. Shout out to y'all, man. Like, like I call them, man. You know, we we at that same kind of like stature, mm-hmm. so we can communicate. I say we pretty that much all the time. It's, yeah. I mean, it's good to have a couple core people you can yeah. just call and just vent to. Yeah, yeah you know, because we pretty much, you know, we pretty much going through the same things. We got, you know, families and house and work and. Dealing with all these stresses, so we pretty much communicate and talk talk our way through things. But other than that, man, it's like shit, nigga, just deal with it, bro. Honestly, mm-hmm. I can say, man, I try to work work through that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's my coping mechanism. I work hard and get through it. Like I build a bridge to get over that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not the best way. I know I need to see counseling because yeah. mm-hmm. it's it's certain things that you know I never got to work through on my own. Because I try to work my way over, yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah, and then it come back yeah. to bite you in the ass. Is it is it anything that you experienced growing up with with your mom that you doing different with your own children? Uh, nah, man. I pretty much like my mom was real loving, real caring. Mm-hmm. Like my mom didn't cuss, you know what I'm saying. She embraced everybody, mm-hmm. you know, and she pretty much coming up. She always stood with right. Mm. Like she never took my side just because I was her son. Mm. She, I, it, it don't matter what went on. If I was wrong, I was wrong. You know what I'm saying? So accountability. Yeah, yeah. She, she instilled that in me. So I do that with my kids. So I'm a loving father. I'm, I'm hard on my boys, but I'm super sweet on my girls. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I, I teach them right. You know what I'm saying? I, I praise them when they do good. I big them up when they do bad and let them know they could do better. You know what I'm saying? I try to. Why you don't be hard on your girls? You you let the. I, I can't. I'm soft. I'm soft with them, man. <laughs> you know them We're girls. hard out here though. Man, them girls, man, it's different, dog. It's I mean, different, dog. I mean, they gonna pretty much get anything they want. I don't think they know it. I mean, I think they know it. I think they know it. <laughs> yeah, I said they about know it now. Yeah, depending on how they is. They gonna pretty they much go ask daddy. Yeah. Like my look, my oldest daughter, man, she already talking. You know, my dad came to visit me a couple of weeks ago. We sitting in there talking. My oldest daughter talking about she ready to go drive. And mm. My dad gonna be like, he gonna say, yeah, when you turn sixteen, we are gonna have that car waiting for you. I'm like, <laughs> we, we. How old is yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. So you know, how old is your oldest? My oldest is uh, fifteen. Oh, you ain't got no time. You got it <laughs> mm-hmm. right around the corner. Right around the yeah. corner. And right you, around the corner. How many daughters do you have? I have three daughters, man. 
Do you do you hug and tell your kids how much you love them all the time? Especially man, that's the boys. Really, that's important, man. No, in, yeah. especially for the boys. Especially the boys, yeah. especially the boys yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I don't think um, like I don't. I don't know, man. I just, you know, it's it's hard on us, man. Yeah. So I, I have to tell them boys, man, because it's, it's going to be hard on them. But they got to know, you know, that they love at all times, man. You exactly, know what I'm saying? Cause they gonna go through. On both sides. Yeah. And I think just early on, like I, we've had an episode, but like me and my pops bumped heads and things like mm-hmm. that. But I think kids, young men, young black men should know early on, mm-hmm. you know, that you can talk to me about anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That you ain't got to always be tough or hard or yeah. stuff like that like that you yeah. love i'm gonna that. be one of your best friends whether you know it or not i'm gonna be yeah. one of your best friends yeah. you can holler me about anything for sure so yeah. I, I i big up you for that man just just showing love and showing that softer side and, you for know sure. yeah. definitely so uh so the executive come in and they tell you hey we like what you're doing with your brand mm-hmm. and everything from the clothing yeah, music, uh, video, everything. We like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. They offer you a bag. You take the bag, or you say, give "No, a, I'm give them a number." A million. A million. I take the million. You take the million. Yeah. Out so, of all your homeboys right now, who you calling to be your manager? To uh, be your to be your man, your guy, because you're gonna need a little help. My, my homeboy, Lil D, man. Lil D. Yeah. That's my nigga, man. Adrian Dyson. Adrian Dyson. Yeah, that's my nigga. Man. He's going to be your manager, but you're going to still need an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's, who's going to be your assistant? I don't know about that, bro. <laughs> I don't know about the assistant. I know who's going to be my manager, though, because my nigga know how to coordinate. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, it's, you know, just something. I was, I'm, I'm for sure taking the bag, though. Okay. Why you? T- why the money? I'm realistic. Why the so a lot of people try to base their, you know, that that question on other people, rich people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, you ain't I ain't rich. You know. I ain't never seen a million dollars. Yeah. And I know I can take whatever I just done and recreate, recreate. everything in five mm-hmm. years. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I got the ability to do that. So bring me the bag. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like niggas be this is delusional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lie, bro. Like, how you gonna? T- because no, because like I said, it's this social media thing yeah. where people we we downplay a million dollars. Oh, yeah. he only got a meal. Oh, only got a meal. Yeah. 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 What you got? Oh, what you? What got? you got? <laughs> a lot of people ain't never seen a million. Exactly. Liquid. I'm probably never gonna have a million dollars at one time. I I I I doubt it. You know what I'm saying? I hope at you one do. Time. I hope I do. Yeah, you Matter it. of fact, I ain't gonna even say that. I ain't trying to put that energy in the <laughs> energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for sure. Real, but dog, real. I'm taking the money, bro. If the money makes sense, like you need know, come with fifty thousand, some shit like that. I'm not taking the money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you like, get fifty thousand in I six months. Fifty thousand, yeah. On, on the hustle. <laughs> yeah. I done did it. Yeah. I done did it, man. You know what I'm saying? But a million in one wop. A million in one wop. I'm, I'm gonna go crazy with it too. Mm. I'm going to go crazy with it because I know how money work now. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I know how money work. I know how the world work. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't no stupid nigga. I'm not going to blow my money. I'm not trying to. Like, I, everywhere I go, I be in the club with slides on. I ain't got nobody impre- to impress, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, right now, everything I'm doing, I'm trying to build for the future, bro. Yeah. It's, it ain't even about me no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's about what I'm leaving and the legacy I'm leaving. You know, I seen a post I made the other day. I had to reshare it. I don't know where it came from, but I was like, uh, I think I got it from somewhere, but it was like, <laughs> you learn life when you're able to plant trees knowing you're never going to sit under the shade. Mm. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's how I live my life now. Like, I'm doing these good deeds. I know I'm probably never going to benefit from them, mm. but I know. It's a drop in the bucket. It's a drop in the bucket, that's man. That's what the big slings said. I was sitting outside bucket. the shop talking to Snap today, and I was like, bro, you know, it's hard to come by people that genuinely uh, fool with you yeah. and will willing to do things that they not looking to benefit from. You bro. Know, that's a real friend. That's a real person to have in your car. It's very hard to find. You know what I'm saying? It's sad to say. Like, you see it. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the times, bro, people ain't genuine. Like, yeah. they sh- they... I don't know how to really explain it, but mm-hmm. it's like they showing their support for you, but in a way that benefits them. You because know what I'm saying? They, they like at one point, I'm gonna need something. So if this person get to this point, yeah, and, they, they, you know, they I'm, I'm gonna hang on for this ride. Yeah, you know. You what know I'm but I, you know what though? Me. I I don't even think it's just that. Yeah. I think it's a way. So say okay. So say, I announce. 
okay, I, I got this partnership deal that I just signed, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand what the partnership is or what it is, but I think it's a big accomplishment. But because they don't understand it, it's not in their world, you know, nobody may react to mm-hmm. it, right? Yeah. But then I come around, like, when I post in my plaque, it's like people sharing the plaque over and over and over and over again. But but I think it's more of them saying, okay, my partner produced for this rap I love and tying them to it so, more than yeah, it is for support of me. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? I mm-hmm. think that's what it is. Honestly, you know, it's still genuine people that honestly support you. And and shout out to them, man, because I really, I really, I couldn't have made it without the support system I got. Mm. But it's a lot of people that's not in it for, you know, it's not genuine. When they waiting, they watching pretty much waiting on you to fuck up. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So I said, I'm just uh, we're wrapping up, I guess, what's your, what's your three year? You got a, you got a three year, five year goal. Oh, uh, man. For yourself in the business. Honestly, bro, right now, like I just said, bro, I'm winging it. Like, I've done that before where I sat down, but I normally do that at the beginning of the year. And I set goals for myself. But, you know, these past couple of years, because of the virus, like, that yeah, shit, like, right all about, of yeah, that shit. You can't count on that. Mm-hmm. You know nothing. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that shit was a struggle. You know what I'm saying? One no plan going on. It was trying to survive. You know what I'm saying? So, like, ever, ever since then, you know, everything has been... Build. I'm trying to build, 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 save, 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 save. Then I can get get myself back on the track where I can start planning again. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm a at quick with question. it. Uh, with that being, with you being working for yourself, being your own business owner, and yeah. you being a hands on person, yeah. person. You know what I'm saying? You conduct a lot of your unless you're sending beats, but other than that, you you hands on on site. Sure. You know. Like the Arkansas commercial said, you hand to hand. Hand to hand. God <laughs> damn. I sell things. I sell things. Hey, shout out to bro, man. Yeah. Yeah. But no, so how, how did the virus really affect you? Man, with? it fucked me up. Yeah. Like, I ain't one of these niggas gonna stunt, man. Mm. It's like, you know what I'm saying? I remember, it's crazy, bro. I remember January. Now that was February. I made a post like, bro, like, this gonna be a good year. You know what I'm saying? I done made the most money in one month than I ever made in my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the next next month, everything, everything shit shut down. down. It's like that. It's like that, bro. And it's like, bro, I'm not working. My old lady working. We got kids to feed. We had just moved into our new home. We had a newborn and, and had a newborn in that next month. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm dealing with all these different things. I have to be in the streets to make money, but I can't go nowhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and the thing that got me through it was learning how to trade. You know what I'm saying? I said, you know, if this shit ever happened again, I need to figure out a way to make money, make my money work for me, and make money move without me having to move myself. Mm. Right. So I you said, I, forex trading? Forex no, I crypto. stock market. Yeah. Stock market. Okay. I trade. You, you know, buying. I day trade. You know okay. what I'm saying? Trade options. Okay. You know, I said I I'd never be in that position again because when I say the virus had me on my dick, yeah. yeah, like it got to the point. You know, I had a 700 credit score. Got to the point I had to use my credit cards to survive and pay bills. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know the what utilization saying? going up, so yeah, your credit scores dropping. Yeah, see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. You know, I ain't. You know, these niggas front this the this yeah. the this ain't the pandemic. This the band niggas stop y'all. You know, I don't do credit card fraud. Nah, I'm yeah. a hustler. I ain't man. scamming. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got to get it out the mud. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, got to the situation where I had to do what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? And I I thank I thank the big guy because we made it through and we didn't have a won't. You know what I'm saying? Me and my old lady can say that we didn't have a want or need. We made it. We survived it, bro. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was just, that was just, you know, the big guy, man, providing for us. For sure. Uh, I want to personally say, thank you for sitting down and sharing your time with us. Hey, you was kissing it. Wait. <laughs> 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 uh, I want to personally uh, thank you, bro, for uh, sitting down and sharing your story with us. I know it's a lot of game that's been given tonight. Um, it seems like you're flowing with the details in and out of so, uh, your process and how you got to where you are. So, for sure. Yeah. Bef- before we leave, though, I want and I want you to take a, a sigh on this. Take a, take a second. Define your lowest moment. Mm. My lowest moment. Uh, 
I think my lowest moment was the, the moment I was telling you about when I had to survive off the beach. The same type of situation. You know, I had just moved into an apartment, had graduated school. I was working at the camp in Dermot. You know, that whole process, you know, I was going, like I had my daughter. I would take my daughter to school, uh, drop her off at daycare early in the morning, mm-hmm. leave from taking her to daycare, drive to UAM, go to class. After class, I would pledge. After I'm pledging Ooh. and going through that process, I would go work my night job. You know what I'm saying? And I went through that shit for, I don't even want to say how long. You know what I'm saying? And nah, then, say how long. These nah, folks didn't nah. know the nah, process. Nah, you can't say how long. Nah. Nah, 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 not how long you pledged. Yeah, no, that was like, yeah. You gotta, I ain't saying <laughs> how long you pledged. I'm saying, give it, yeah, give it, it, yeah. It was a minute. It was a, it was a few yeah. months, man. And then, you know, doing that and then losing my job and just everything gone. Like, this was my, you know, like, I, I was doing the, the beats, but it wasn't a point like where I had to do it. Mm-hmm. And it put me in a situation where I had to do that shit. So, like, man, like, I remember my homeboy CG said he pulled up on me. Like, he told me years later, it's like, bro, Styles, I remember, bro. Nigga, I pulled up on you, nigga. And you was in the house. I ain't seen you the whole week. <laughs> you was in the house. Hair grew all up. You ain't had no haircut. <laughs> but you was in grind mode. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah, I was like that, bro. And it was like I had to, I was making sacrifices. I was working, 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 and one no days off because I had, I knew I had to provide, man. And, and that shit, that shit, I never forget how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And to this day now, you know, I never, I never overspend. You know what I'm saying? I never, I don't, you know, I don't buy bullshit no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I make my own clothes, so I don't have to go buy clothes every weekend. You know what I'm saying? I splurge on myself every now and then, but other than that, like, I ain't, I don't need no big overhead because I don't want to be in no situation like I was before. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Quick question. Yeah. How much weight you lose when you please? <laughs> oh, I was in the best shape of my life when I got done. <laughs> hey, I was wearing medium shirts. <laughs> Damn. Hey, yeah. hey, real talk, bro. I started wearing medium v necks after I pledged, man. I thought I was the shit. Real yeah, time. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's a hell of a die. You want to lose the weight? Don't lie, boy. Oh, my God. Y'all just throwing questions out there. I thought we was wrapping up. I got another. Qu- when was the last time you cried? Man. Shit, bro. Man, probably about a month ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, talking to my mom. We was reminiscing about my, my cousin, the guy on my picture on my necklace. Pretty I've been much, looking at that. yeah. It's pretty much like my, you know, like I said, I got siblings, but you know, what I'm saying we weren't close. This was pretty much like the only brother I had. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And like, you know, every summer we together, every spring break we together. It's like we grew up together. We was back to back, same age. You know what I'm saying? He was living in Shreveport, but we were back and forth. I would go to his prom. He would come to my prom. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. tight like that. Mm-hmm. And that shit shook me, bro. That shit shook. That shit. That shit shook me, bro. Like I never got over it. I never allowed myself to get over it. Mm. You know, even I. I think back. You know, when I went to the funeral, like I didn't cope with it at the funeral. You know what I'm saying? After the funeral, I went to the casino, lost like four thousand mm. dollars. You know what I'm saying? Come home and just. You know, just fucking off. You know mm. what I'm saying? Just trying to block the shit out any way I could. I never dealt with it. You know, and me and moms was sitting in the kitchen just reminiscing, thinking about it. And nigga just broke down because I ain't never had the, had the time to, yeah. to, to grieve. To grieve you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, there ain't no proper way to grieve. But yeah, yeah, you. I bury my dog, then I come back home, and we're dealing with family issues. I got to make sure these bills paid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I don't have no way to cope. Like, like I don't drink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't smoke these problems away. Like, yeah. I have to deal with this shit. Like, this shit ain't, like, I deal with this shit internal, bro. Yeah, man. I don't know. You trying to, you, DJ Styles get on here. You trying to make some beats. You I trying to show out. Man. <laughs> <laughs> My nigga engineer. <laughs> <though, bro. laughs> yeah. You got anything else, LJ? Nah, I don't. Um, I want to leave on a high note, man. Play one right, of them hey, bangers again. I, but, uh, you know, I personally want to thank you for coming on because you could have easily said, nah, bro, I ain't got time for that. You nah, know, I appreciate so y'all. I, I definitely, and this is something that, you know, there's no personal benefit for us from mm-hmm. this. This is all for the people. For sure. You know, and you've been a blessing to the people. 
So I, I really personally want to thank you. Yeah, I appreciate y'all, here. man, for having me. You know, for sure, for sure. Now what y'all was saying? Man, now? play one of those. I get paid. Yeah. I, I got nobody to know that. <laughs> what? Y'all can figure that out after this shit. I know. I got a signing bonus. For who? For Joe. Fuck yeah. yeah. signing bonus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, y'all finna have, y'all finna be like Joe Budden already. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to Benny the Butcher? For sure. For sure. Griselda. When I when I was thinking about you earlier, I thought about this right here. You know what? I'm, I'm a West Side Gun fan, man. Yeah, West Side Gun hard though. Man, I like the nigga, you know, his mind, man. How the nigga move. What's the best song? What's your best song you didn't produce though? Like, I think she ain't sure. right. I think she ain't right. Yeah, she ain't right with uh with Rocco Ride D and uh Kevin Gates. Cause he produces, so it ain't gonna get muted on YouTube. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. I can approve it. Yeah. With Rocco? Yeah. Let's go. Let's start off on a good foot. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch ain't right. It's Arkansas right there, y'all. Yeah. Southeast Arkansas. <clears throat> Uh, she off herself, she by her fetish She ain't got no ethics nah. If you paying, she staying You ain't, she in the wind Iron fist, shrewd attitude She ain't gon' pretend no. Only thing she loyal to is them dividends She gon' get it from you or get it from him Or should I say them, she'll fuck your friend Then double back, you ask her about her She be like, what? Mind your business, stand your lane, nigga Soon as you show your emotion She know you lame, nigga She gives a damn about who you are Fuck your fame, nigga she out here playing. She ain't looking for no main nigga. Beautiful girl, body immaculate. Make it's it's it. Creme de la creme, strive for the best. She far from average. A smile to hook. Soon as you look, you book. You gon' do whatever it takes. She did whatever it took. Poof. Then move, she gone. I can't even say she wrong. Cause so much be going on. She gotta take care of her. Man, I really like that girl. But the bitch ain't right. But man, I really like that girl. Yeah. Man, I really like that girl. Man, like but that the girl. bitch ain't right. Oh, oh, oh. Y'all, I really like that girl. Who that singer? Like it's that man, The One. I was just saying, The One, huh? Yeah. huh? <laughs> We've been fucking for a little okay. second. Our relationship kind of reckless. I'm tripping. I know we shouldn't have never intertwined. Cause I'm married and you will never be mine. Even if it wasn't, you got a background. But I love the way she rub a nigga back down. I confess. I'm really catching feelings for her. I know she ain't right, but she just feel this boy. My niggas think I'm fucking tripping. I don't give a fuck that she like women. That's my boo thing. Her main is rolling cool, man. In the bed, she just do things that drive a nigga insane. Man, I really like that girl, but the bitch ain't right. But man, I really like that girl. Man, I really like that girl. But the bitch ain't right. Y'all, I really like that girl. Fuck what other people talking about. I love the way she call for me when I'm alone. Fast moving, no coupe cruises to Cancun. Body fragrance, scented lotion, but Dale said soon. Told chick, nothing, no amateur. Handling the moment, not comedian speakers. Chief and reefer while under components. Rumor surface as if shorty fuck one of my homies. But when you in the lane, I'm in, never giving it notice. Lick her nipples, ass wiggle it. Tickle, she want it up against the sofa, bend her over, she love it, she moaning in the mall, walking like a horse, buying this and that, dropping bands on designer brands, I tend to mix Man, I really like that girl, but the bitch ain't right, bitch ain't right, man, I really like that girl, man, I really like that girl, but the bitch ain't right, hey, real quick before we go. How how do you get how do beat makers, engineers, producers, how do you get royalties off of money? You gotta have your business in order, bro. Like um you pretty much gotta have uh your publishing your publishing set up. You know what I'm saying? It's two separate entities. So what people don't understand is you get paid as a writer and you get paid as a publisher. 
So you pretty much have to register yourself on both sides. On both sides. So it's the song is split up. So a song is split up on on fifty percent and fifty percent. So fifty percent goes to the writer side. So say you do a song with three artists and one producer, y'all split that fifty percent four ways. Mm. Unless they're actually paid off, you know what I'm saying? Like a transaction, like I'm like going to pay just, you up front for Yeah, and, and you don't get no credits on the back end. Okay. You know? so but I you, always take my back end. You always take your back always. end? Always. So is that how you're able to get money for, forever? Yep. yep. And so. you still get money off of songs? That every three months. I get a every check every three months. That's a cold piece keep of game. Keep that address updated, right man. Uh, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get it? How did you get it? How did you get your music registered at it when you were younger? When I was younger, um, man, the old way, man. It, actually, when you upload your beats on those websites, they do like you know it's it's kind of like, 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 like you gotta log in, yeah. Oh, okay. Set up, but, uh, set up an account. But we used to do it the you know the ghetto way, man. We used to mail the CDs to ourselves. We'll make beat CDs and mail them to ourselves and keep them yeah keep copyright them locked up. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, poor, that's poor man copyright. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and then you know just got older and then you know. Just learn how to do it the right way. That's what's wow, that was a great question. Saying. Appreciate the game, DJ <laughs> Styles. Give us a tag, man. Go and drop it, carry us up out of here. How can we? How can everybody follow you, man? You can follow me everywhere, man. DJ Styles, DJ Young Styles, Work Nation Media, man. Just Google search it, look it up. All platforms, man. And tap in with your boy. Yeah, baby. What's up?